tech. So we have an ecosystem that is made up of businesses. We've got small businesses and big businesses. You've just seen some of those. We've got academia. We've got eight universities, plus 14 colleges, plus centers for excellence. We also have two governments, because in addition to the UK government, Westminster style, we've got Welsh government. And 22 areas of responsibility it devolves down to our government. It's not things like policing and what have you, or, or, or defense, but it is inward investment, tax, innovation grants. So getting businesses going. I can get money out of Welsh government. I don't need to go cap in hand to Westminster, which is handy because all the money that lands in Westminster stays in Westminster or stays in that southeast block area where most of the investment sits. So having it come a separate government getting a pot of money is really useful, hence the development bank of Wales. Uh, and then we've got defence. We obviously talk about police forces and the regional organised crime units because the only reason we've got a cyber industry is because of cyber crime. There's no cyber crime, we'll be out of a job. Um, but as you've seen, we have a strong, strong military presence here as well. So this is our ecosystem. It's probably about 3,000 people in this ecosystem now from over a 1,000 organizations. Um, and uh, there's my old slide numbers. And the way we talk to these organizations, the way we collaborate, the way we communicate with each other is through a thing called a cluster. And a cluster is basically an informal networking group. Now, that's really the whole reason why I wanted to deliver this talk. That didn't take long to get around to the point, did it? <laughs> Clusters. Clusters are informal networking groups. Back in 2014, the UK launched its national cybersecurity strategy. It's a bit late in the day, actually. Everybody else launched their national cybersecurity strategies in 2011 because of all the stuff that had taken place in 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. Namely, Estonia, 2007, Georgia, 2008. You had Stuxnet sitting there between 2008, which was discovered in 2010, and everybody went, you can hack a nuclear power station. <laughs> oh my God. Bombarded with Estonia being taken offline as a country, you know, if nuclear refineries being taken out. Everybody then went, this is getting silly. We should have a national cybersecurity strategy. Everybody else's national cybersecurity strategies popped up in 2011. The US declared cyber a domain along with land, sea, air, um, and space. Anyone seen Space Force on the telly? I think it's exactly like that. Um, so you've got land, sea, air, space is the fourth domain, fifth domain being cyber. That was declared in 2011 by the US. Uh, we followed suit in 2016. Uh, and our national cybersecurity strategy was launched in 2014. So if you have your the initial launch in 2011 of that strategy, so our UK strategy went public as a discussion document, everybody sitting there, it had some really cool stuff in it, which eventually was implemented in 2014. Like we should have the CISP, the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Partnership, so that businesses can share information with the police without necessarily it all going public and then nobody buys from them because they have a data breach. Um, we should have universities being centers for excellence so that they can have cyber courses that are certified. That came out in 2011 strategy. We should also have money available. We should have money that we can give out as grants to people and bursaries to new cyber people. That came out in 2011. And what you've also then had is the cyber essential scheme. Every organization in the UK, however small, should come up to a minimum level, hence the cyber essentials, the marketing through there, good description. The cyber essential scheme raises everybody's awareness and everybody's cyber capability up a notch, making the UK a safe place to be. That was launched in 20, from the 2011 strategy in 2014. Also in that strategy, there was a little piece that said cyber people should talk to cyber people. That turned out to be a real pickle because cyber people don't even talk to their mums, let alone each other. So it's really hard. And the UK government tried to do it, said, Hi, I'm from a government department. You should all come in a room with me and talk. And everybody's like, Yeah, that's not going to happen. They're all sitting there with tin foil on their heads. Not gonna go. The government didn't form it, cyber people formed it in Malvern. You know that little epicenter? They all said, we should probably sit down and share best practice and we should probably talk to each other. But let's not invite the big cyber crimes and let's not invite the government. And they're informal networking groups that kind of sit outside of that structure, mostly SME. There's about 20 of those dotted around the country now. We had the first one was in Melbourne, second one was South Wales Cyber. 
Um, and you know, we followed suit very, very quickly. And that's when we discovered all of that stuff on that map. It all came out of the woodwork. We just put a tweet out and went, oh, we're going to cluster. And everybody turned up. It was like, oh my God. So that's when we discovered we were sitting in a field of, uh, field of diamonds. We had a critical national infrastructure, data privacy cluster, women in cyber. We're going to capture the flag to look at the gamification of cyber. We've even got a Middle East cluster. Don't ask us in the bar afterwards. Um, so we have eight clusters that are currently operating out of Wales that are informal networking groups to do with cyber that come up with some good activities. Um, then you jump up a level to the UK, and this is Wales, clearly. That's where the epicenter is. And you've got clusters dotted all over the place. UK C3, we love little titles and organizations with numbers in them. It basically means there's three C's in it. So it's UK Cyber Cluster Collaboration Group. And that's there to encourage more clusters to form. So the cluster organization, we're going to fund them, we're going to support them. The funding comes from DCMS and it gets funneled through UK C3. And their real focus is on ecosystem development. How do we develop that, make them all talk to each other? Innovation, how do we encourage more innovation and get more people innovating new products? And how do we tackle the skills gap and really get some skills growth going on as best we can? Those are the three main themes of UK C3, which are filtered down to the clusters so that those would be the three main themes of the clusters. So we've got a little bit of governance now, and a little bit of structure, and a little bit of a national layer that we've got over the top of all of those clusters. Why? Why, why, why? Well, I mean, we talked about the 2011 strategy, most of which was implemented in 2014. They refreshed it in 2016, because it's a five-year strategy. They refreshed it again in 2021, which actually was launched in 2022, at the beginning of this year. So let's take a look at that strategy. This is the national cybersecurity strategy and it has five pillars. So these are the five chapters, the five pillars of the National Cyber Security Strategy. Have you all read this, by the way? I think it's about 800 pages or something. It's really quite a biggie, yeah. So yeah, good luck with that. Um, so this is their five pillars, ecosystem resilience, technology, international, and then threat analysis. Um, if we drop down a level, what are the priorities for transformation? So this is national cyber capability. So the whole theme is about capability drops into the vision to make the UK the safest place to live and work online. That's actually been the vision since 2011, actually. That's been the, a core vision for everybody. And if you look at the business plan pillars, dropping down again from that top layer, these have all got their own business plans. So the one we're really interested in is that one, because we're clusters. And I've already said the word ecosystem about 18 times. So you can the, the clue is in the name. So if we're playing in that space, what are we supposed to do according to the strategy? The answer is strengthen the blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, look, networks. So we should do that ecosystem, networking, create and build networks of people and capabilities that are all partnering. The second one, enhance, blah, 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 long sentence, skills. So that's your skills growth. Let's get skills going, our cyber skills, close the skills gap, which we're doing, by the way. Anyone know what the cyber skills gap is today as per ISC squared survey that we're doing? Last one, 2.7 million. That's to find us how many job adverts are there saying, please, please, please come and work for me if you know cyber, compared to how many qualified people exist to fulfill those jobs. Now, in most industries, there's more of those than those. That's why we have unemployment. In cyber, it's clearly the other way around, but to what extent? And the answer is 2.7 million job adverts with no one to apply for. That's the skills gap. Good news is 2.7 is a good number because two years earlier it was 4 million. That's shocking. It's 600,000 in the UK and we're actually good at it. So there's some really big numbers going on here around this skills gap. And it's all about the demand versus not enough people, which is why we're doing all these uh, activities in universities and colleges and training and, and what have you. So skills, when we talk about skills gap, it's, it's real. It, it, there is definitely a gap. Um, the final one, foster growth, sustainability, growth, because we're looking at innovation, getting new businesses, startups, etc. So you can see, hopefully, that the way those clusters are run and governed underneath that UKC3, particularly the early clusters like Cyber Wales and Malvern that formed and created themselves right back in the good old days in 2014, we have the same vision, we have the same mission, we're all trying to do the same thing, we just do it regionally and we do it in our own way because it's an informal networking group. So really what I'm here to talk about, uh, just to wrap that up, is form clusters. Are you part of a cluster? Are you in an AI cluster? 
are you in a blockchain cluster? Do you cluster around your specific areas of data, the things that you're particularly interested in? So if you're looking at, for example, uh, human voice capability or human response capability online, is that a specialist area where you can cluster with like companies, like researchers, et cetera? But solidify those clusters. Get those clusters so that they're a thing. Advertise them. Tell people they exist. Because when we formed the South Wales cluster, at the first meeting, 14 people turned up. And we thought, yes, because there's only 25 people at the Malvern one, and that have been running for a year. As soon as we tweeted, just ran the first meeting of the South Wales cybersecurity cluster, it was great. From that point onwards, we have been inundated with people we didn't even know existed. Researchers, small businesses, innovators, companies that you look at the company and you go, it, it makes barbed wire fence. It, its name is actually fencing. It's got an AL fencing. It's a fence company. But all of the gates, all of the electrics, everything on that fence is digital. And you've seen it on the films. They go, the fence is still on. And they go, hang on. Fence is off. And everybody runs through the gate. It's like, that's how you do it. There's no point in the fence if you can just cyber attack the gate. It's nonsense. So yes, there's a cyber company that nobody even knows is a cyber company. Do they count as a cyber company? I'll point you back at Airbus. What percentage of Airbus's turnover, one of the giant cyber prime contractors, what percentage of their turnover is on cyber, bearing in mind they make satellites and aircraft and military and train systems. It's 0.01%. And yet they are considered one of the biggest cyber companies in the world. So you don't have to be just, just cyber to be cyber. You can be a fence company making barbed wire fences and have an amazing cyber operation. One of the best cyber operations in Wales right now is in the DVLA. Because they have to share their data with over a thousand entities from insurance companies to policemen to park car parking places. They have to share data with everybody and keep it secure. Uh, how do you do that? They've got an amazing operation, but they're not a cyber company. So that for me is why setting up clusters, formalizing those clusters, advertising, pushing the word out and actually getting things organized, you will find people come out of the woodwork that you don't know exist and you'll end up with a wonderful ecosystem like what we've got. It's not just cyber in Wales, we've also got the world's first semiconductor cluster. We've got FinTech Wales and Tech UK or UK Tech Cluster Group was formed in Cardiff and is now a UK wide cluster. So that's me. If you want any more information, 